NASA has a warning for people who want to get a closer look at next month's total solar eclipse. They're also urging residents to stock up with one to two weeks of food in advance of the event and to have full fuel tanks. They're also saying that it's likely that communication facilities could be overloaded, possibly making it difficult to make cell phone calls. On April 8th, 2024, a rare celestial event will unfold over North America, transforming day into night and captivating millions. This moment, where a spot on Earth experiences a total solar eclipse once every 375 years, invites us into a world of awe and wonder. Our journey explores the thrilling blend of myth, anticipation, and the science behind the darkness. First, let's talk about what we really know about this great American eclipse. For about four and a half minutes, on April 8th, 2024, it will look like night in the middle of the day. This happens because the moon moves right in front of the sun, blocking it out completely. This eclipse is special because it's longer than usual. The moon will be closer to Earth, making it look bigger, and the eclipse will last longer. But there are a lot of strange conspiracy theories about this event. Let's break it down into what's rumor and what's real. We are going to kick things off with a UFO sighting. Picture it. A regular night, then boom, an explosion in the sky, dogs going nuts, and a UFO casually cruising by. Despite the fire department checking out an explosion and a mysterious hole in a wall, the UFO guest star remains unconfirmed. Apparently, everyone in the neighborhood saw it, but no one's really buying the story. Adding fuel to the fire, there's talk about preparing for the so-called solar apocalypse on April 8th. Officials are advising people to stock up on food, fuel, and water for three days. Now, why do they need to stock up for a solar eclipse that is going to last for just four minutes? Because some people think this isn't just any eclipse. It's expected to draw massive crowds to densely populated areas to view the eclipse, straining resources and infrastructure. This event's path crosses over major cities, and it's predicted that the eclipse path will be significantly wider than the one in 2017, covering more ground and affecting more people. But the heads up to stock up for at least three days still doesn't make any sense, does it? Before we continue our cosmic journey, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you're as fascinated by the mysteries of the universe as we are. Moving on to another claim floating around online, especially on TikTok, where people are all hyped up about the solar eclipse crossing towns named Nineveh in the United States and Canada. TikTokers have even produced maps that claim to show the path of totality going over these towns. According to some, it's six, seven, or even eight towns. They're linking it back to a story from a long time ago about a Hebrew man named Jonah from the Bible. He was this prophet who ended up in Nineveh right when an eclipse was happening. But when you actually check the facts, the eclipse path of totality isn't doing a grand tour over six, seven, or eight towns named Nineveh. It's just passing over two of them, one in Ohio and the other in Indiana. So that kind of dials down the drama and makes the whole sign from God thing a bit less scary. Then we've got the deeper end of the pool. Old prophecies and judgments, with a sprinkle of the world's eight oldest families getting a cosmic heads up. The eclipse date somehow ties to these families, and the rumor mill is working overtime on this one. It's like every ancient prophecy decided to RSVP for this event. And because no conspiracy buffet is complete without a political dish, there's a wild theory about Donald Trump battling a satanic cult. This isn't your usual political talk. There's a group of people who believe that Trump is secretly fighting against a satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. When asked about this theory, Trump didn't directly say he's leading this charge, but he mentioned he's all for saving the world from big problems. He links this to fighting against what he calls a radical left philosophy that he believes would destroy the United States. According to him, if the US falls, the rest of the world is going to follow suit. Next up, we're diving into what this eclipse really means for us down here on Earth. The path of this eclipse will go right across North America. It starts in Mexico, moves up through the United States, and finishes in Canada. If you're lucky enough to be in the right spot, like Nazas or Torian in Mexico, all you need to do is look outside. Around 32 million people live where the eclipse will be total, but even more, around 70 million might travel just to see it. Even if you're not on the direct path, you'll still catch a part of the action. The eclipse will be visible, at least a little bit, from many places around the world. Now, why is this one so special? Well, compared to the last big eclipse we saw in 2017, this one's darkness will last almost two minutes longer. That means more time to check out the solar corona, that's the sun's outer atmosphere, and it looks incredible. 
Cities like Dallas, Little Rock, Indianapolis, Cleveland, and Buffalo are right on the path. And places like San Antonio, Austin, Cincinnati, and Montreal are also getting front row seats. With millions living just a short drive away, we could be looking at one of the biggest eclipse viewing parties in history. But do you know what makes an eclipse? We're going beyond the basics into the science that astonishes even the experts. Before we dive deep into the details, let's brush up on some space facts. Solar eclipses happen when the moon gets between Earth and the sun, blocking the sun from view. This can only happen during a new moon when the moon and sun are lined up just right. It's a rare setup because everything has to be perfectly aligned, and that doesn't happen every month. When we talk about why some new moons bring us solar eclipses and others don't, it all boils down to the moon's orbit. You see, the moon's path around the sun is slightly tilted compared to our orbit around the sun. Most of the time, this tilt means the moon passes just above or below the sun from our point of view, so there is no eclipse. For an eclipse, partial or total, to happen, the moon must cross the plane of Earth's orbit around the sun right when it's between us and the sun. This special spot is called a node, and the moon has to be near one of these nodes at the same time it's in the new moon phase to block the sun. But even then, it's not a guarantee. The shadow the moon casts can vary in length because of how the distance between Earth and the moon changes. This shadow has to be long enough to reach us, which only happens when the moon is pretty close, near its perigee. If it's too far, we get an annular eclipse where the sun looks like a ring of fire instead of being totally covered. But on April 8th, we're in luck. The moon will be close enough to Earth that its shadow will cover us, and we'll see a total solar eclipse. The moon will appear 5.5% bigger in the sky, making the eclipse even more spectacular. The shadow size on Earth depends on how close the moon is to us and how far it is from the sun at that moment. The shadow's width cannot exceed 267 kilometers, but that's enough to plunge parts of Earth into darkness, creating a path of totality. This path moves quickly across the Earth's surface from west to east because of how both the Earth and the moon are moving. The point where the eclipse lasts the longest is called the point of greatest eclipse. The April 8th eclipse will be in Nazas, Mexico, where the total eclipse will last 4 minutes and 28 seconds. Plus, Nazas has a good chance of clear skies, making it an ideal spot for eclipse watching. On average, any single spot on Earth might see a total solar eclipse every 375 years. Each year, the whole planet gets two to five solar eclipses of all types, but usually we get two. The longest total eclipse can get is about 7.5 minutes, which is super rare. Most total eclipses last just two to three minutes, but including the partial phases, an eclipse can last over four hours. The longest one recorded was 4.44 hours during an annular eclipse back in 1955. In the US, the eclipse shadow starts its journey in Texas around 1.27 p.m. CDT and says goodbye in Maine at 3.35 p.m. EDT. But if you're planning to catch this eclipse, being in the right spot is everything. Cities like Indianapolis, Dayton, and Cleveland are smack in the middle of the action. However, if you're in New York City, Boston, or Philly, you'll only catch a partial view. It's still cool, but it's not the full deal. To see the magic happen, like the solar corona lighting up in all its glory, you've got to be in the path of totality. As we wrap up our journey through the shadows and revelations of the great American eclipse, we're left with one final thought. What if this celestial event is more than just a moment of darkness? What if it's a gateway to understanding our place in the cosmos?